All right, what I got here today is my Norm GE clutch I use on my mini bike. But it's also used for go kart racing. Um, this video is mainly about changing the springs. Um, it's fairly simple, but um, with the stiffer springs, it can be a challenge. And so this video is for me and everybody else that owns one of these or is thinking about buying one. And they're about $75 average um, on the internet. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is remove this snap ring. Um, I do not have my snap ring pliers. I did lose them. So here is another technique I like to use. Um, this particular snap ring has an indentation near the sides. And so I like to use one flat blade screwdriver to push it out. The other one to push it up. You get one edge over the top here and then do the other and it should remove quickly and easily without flying across the room there we go check as you can see it's nice and straight as simple as lifting the top drum off the hub and we'll take a look inside here it's fairly nice I did clean this uh, a couple hours ago just to keep my gloves clean and my tools clean um, there is a roller bearing which is a nice feature and um, <clears throat> every time you open up this clutch it's a good idea to add a little bit of high temperature wheel bearing grease to the roller bearing just for um, good maintenance I'd say so here we have the hub with the shoes and the springs. And I'll go ahead and show you a quick way to remove this. It's as simple as getting between the spring and the shoe and just lifting up. And then as you can see the springs lock into the shoe with the dowel pin and these springs are uh, rated at 2000 rpm so they're very easy to remove and install and um, what I will show you next is how to install stiffer springs because it can be quite a challenge okay what I have here is a pair of 3000 rpm screw springs also known as green springs. Um, a lot of the paint has uh, been removed over time. I've installed them and taken them out quite a few times. It's probably good when you store these that you store them in a bag and label the bag what color they were originally so that you don't forget. So these are 3000 RPM and if you compare them to the 2000 rpm springs you can see they're a lot thicker and they're much more difficult to install what i'd like to show you now is a diagram of the different settings for this clutch um, as you can see there's five different settings four of them you can use with heavy shoes that's what i have here is the heavy shoes and the lighter ones have more holes drilled in them to reduce weight and there's advantages to both different kinds but here we have the way you set the um, the shoes according to the notches in the shoes uh, my clutch is inbound as you see up here or inboard I should say inboard rotation so I'll go ahead and circle that so I know that that's what I'll always be setting my shoes to According to the diagram, this is the way the shoes will be set up according to the hub. And so, I'll, uh, I'll show you how it should look with the notches, with the shoes together. It should look like an X. But if they happen to look like 
the notches look like a gingerbread man with no head. That means you got one twisted around. So you just twist one around. We got the X. That's how you set up your shoes. Now some settings, you'd actually twist them like this. And you've got two more different settings. But for our for setting up my clutch, we're gonna twist them this way and get them ready to install the springs. So first what I do is I use, I try the needle nose pliers. I find a nice, try to grip the spring. Find a nice place to hold it. And with the, with it in place, try to tap it with the hammer. I don't know if you can see that. And as you can see, I got it fairly quickly. The spring is now in the correct position on the shoe. And I will now connect it to the other shoe, making sure that the shoes are lined up in the X, not the gingerbread guy. So we'll go ahead and stand them both up together and place some support with your finger. Try not to smash it with a hammer and you got to give it a nice swift hit with the hammer for it to actually lock into place. take a little bit of time. You want to get it in there as good as possible and give it a nice hit. And we got it. As you can see the spring is nice and locked in both shoes and before we put this on the hub it is best that we get the spring, the other spring started in one of the holes. And uh, this is a nice technique. Lay one of them down, they're still connected. Turn one up and get the pliers. And try to set it in place with the hammer. And that went up fairly easily. I've had a lot of practice today with this. And before we connect, this spring to the last shoe, we'll go ahead and install the hub. Okay, at this point, it's now time to put the hub, <coughs> or put the shoes inside the hub, and attach the last spring. So I don't know if you can see that here. We just kind of spread the shoes, get that hub in there somewhere, and, uh, see there we go now we've got it in place now it's time to connect the last spring and there's actually uh, <clears throat> there's actually a specific technique for this last spring connection and that's this uh, Phillips head screwdriver again and we're gonna go ahead and put the point make sure the point is inside next to the dowel. Hopefully you can see this here. And just leverage it. Hold the spring with your index finger. And what you're going to do is try to guide it right in the hole. Oh, we almost got it. So this is very tricky. And you want to do this carefully so you don't hurt yourself. Um, Let's try it again. There we go. And we got it. Now what I like to do at this point to make sure the springs are safely installed is I like to give them a tap with the hammer. Okay. I, I believe if they weren't installed correctly they would pop out. Just give them some nice taps. And then a better way to check make sure the springs are installed is of course to make sure 
that the spring loops around the dowel pins inside the shoe. I don't know if you can see that. It's nice. That one is looped around. See there? Check the other side. That one seems to be looped around. And that one seems to be looped around as well. They're nice and locked in place. They should not pop out. And at this point, you want to go ahead. It'd be a good idea to go ahead and clean this surface and this surface. And then the surface of the shoes right here. Clean it with some brake cleaner. But do not get the brake cleaner in the bearing or on this surface here, which is the surface that rides on the needle bearing, needle roller bearing. This is the last part of installing the hub and the clutch together. Now we've got that back on. And there's a special technique I learned today on getting this back on without using any tools, the snap ring. So I hope you could see this. What you want to do is actually put it sideways so that you get one side hooked into the groove, start in the groove. What you're going to do is like a, it's like installing a bicycle tire. You're going to put pressure, start to put pressure around the sides. Make sure you start one end with the other end, not started. And then you push it around. And as you can see, as you can see from this angle, you've got this one in place all the way up to here. And now you got this glass part. Face it away from you. Just push with your thumb. Well, it's not working with the gloves. Or you could take a flat blade. Push that into place. Hold the hub and the drum. Try to push it apart. Make sure that snap ring is in place. Make sure it spins nice and freely. And you got your springs all nice and installed. It should be ready to go and ready for installation.